Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above the only sky Imagine all the people When I was born, I was immediately placed into foster care and the guardianship was placed with Agatha and Robert Armstead. And they had purchased a 60-acre farm in Maine. And uh, that's where I grew up. Agatha was extremely self-reliant. She was a self-taught horticulturalist. Um, she could cane a chair, hook a rug. She found the rudimentary steps of classical ballet in a magazine. She asked me to practice these steps every day, holding on to the doorknob in our living room. And that's how I learned the first steps of ballet. Vicky came for an audition, and she immediately got into first position. She even moved her arms correctly. And I asked her if she knew what second position was, and she proudly got herself into second position, and she knew fourth position, and she knew fifth position. And I said, well, where have you studied? And she said, we have a book. And I said, a book? And he said, yes. And my grandmother would read me the directions, and I would do what she told me that she got from the book. And I was probably was called by a social worker and berated me for about an hour for referring to children as poor. That we had gone beyond that. We called them disadvantaged. Well, my partner, Billy Wilson, came from a poor family and he said, Honey, I was poor, but I wasn't a bit disadvantaged. And I just thought, you know, this is really extraordinary. You try and do something good, and somebody finds you and tells you that the language you're using is wrong, but they never thought of putting together a program for these children. It didn't matter what you call them, poor, disadvantaged, underprivileged, whatever, you know, all these words. So I continued to call it poor children. I brought my kids up with discipline. They had to make sure that the place was clean, their room was clean, make up their beds before they even come downstairs and eat. On a sad day, they expect to sleep. I don't think so. They got up early in the morning, and I mean early in the morning, to get the house done. Because after all, they're the one that do it. You have to help other people. That's the biggest thing. Barbara's house was a place that I went to on weekends. As soon as you walked in the door, you were in Jamaica. It was 90 degrees in the house at all times, and there was chicken and dumplings on the stove, plantains. It was a whole other world. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, West Indies. My mother, she worked as a cook in a Chinese restaurant in Jamaica, and when she came to the United States, she worked hard to send me to college. She's the one who sponsored me here. She had three jobs. And as a result of that, she bought all this property and she instilled in me the importance of owning land, having your own land so no one can remove you off of it. I came here with one suitcase. I know I own three homes and I've been in my job for 33 years, the same job. I think that somewhere in me, I wanted to be a dancer but I wasn't lucky enough to get into that field. And I love dancing and I love music, and that's why I love ballet. I became a foster parent without any thought at all. It just happened. My daughter brought an aunt and Vicky to stay here, and without even asking my husband or thinking, I said, sure, why not?
There's a multitude of organizations in our nation that do amazing work on behalf of foster children. Uh, commissions and panels, the Department of Children and Family Services, the Department of Human Services, and they all have their place. But unless we come together heart to heart, hand to hand, and take these children on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we're never going to get anywhere. And that was shown to me by my foster mothers, my mentors. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above the only sky. Imagine all Imagine there's no country 